All right, so last year, Valve drops the Steam Deck. It's this true passion project for their team with this ultimate goal of taking the entire PC gaming experience, shrinking it down into a handheld. I was super excited for this, and it was a pretty optimistic challenge that came with many doubts. So I decided, what better way than to test this thing out to its full potential, then replace my gaming PC, and use the Steam Deck only. So here we go. So the past decade of Valve's projects have been quite a mixed bag of different missions to achieve based on the goals that have been set out. Now that didn't stop the team from trying to bring to life a lot of these visions and drive the gaming industry further. Now I've got a couple takes regarding this whole Steam Deck experience recently, but before we talk about them, we gotta take a little rewind backwards and talk about Valve's progression before we got to the Steam Deck. I want you to imagine the Steam Deck as this culmination of Valve's past experiences wrapped up into one device, because it's pretty impossible to ignore here. So almost 10 years ago, in 2013, Valve announces SteamOS to the world, which is their very own operating system that's designed to bring PC gaming to the big screen. And during that same year, they unveiled the idea of Steam Machines, which were essentially mini gaming PCs made by partner manufacturers in collaboration with Valve that would run this new Linux-based operating system. Now, alongside all of this came another bold experiment, which was the Steam Controller, the answer to the now question of how you're gonna play PC games optimized for mouse and keyboard in a living room. Fast forward to CES 2014, Valve unveils a lineup of 12 different Steam Machines, ranging from 500 bucks to several thousand dollars. So this was the first concrete hardware we had seen, and it was pretty much all over the place. In May of that year, Valve announces that the Steam Machines and Steam Controller were getting delayed to 2015, but then strangely enough, at the end of 2014, the Alienware Alpha, which was the flagship Steam Machine, ships to reviewers with Xbox 360 controllers and Windows, because Steam OS and the controller we're not done yet. So it was clear at that point that the entire Steam Machine launch was having issues. All right, fast forward to 2015, Valve showcases the Steam Controller's final design and announces Steam Machines will be shipping November of 2015. But at this time, they're also working with HTC on the Vive VR headset and then announce the Steam Link, which is basically another device that can increase the accessibility of PC gaming. It promised to let users stream content from their PC to other devices. So wrapping things up, June of 2015, Valve opens pre-orders for select Steam Machines. Eventually, November of 2015, the world gets to meet the Steam Machine, which is ultimately a laggy mess with a clunky interface, limited game selection. So the whole premise that you can have a great idea for a product, and even if there's some light at the end of the tunnel, but it sucks, things aren't gonna work out. By 2016, it was reported that less than 500,000 Steam Machines had been sold, and by 2018, Steam ultimately pulled the plug, removed the sales selection for Steam Machines. A year later, the Steam Controller was officially discontinued while Valve battled lawsuits over patent infringement for the back two paddles. So you can put the blame on many different reasons why Valve's projects have struggled over the years. The limitations of SteamOS not being quite ready to go against Windows, them releasing the Steam Link, which may have worked against the Steam machines, or you can blame the hype just flat out dying out. We can't really say that Valve abandons their hardware. They've shown everyone they can make really capable devices in-house with the Valve Index recently, but now you can understand some of the speculations that surrounded the Steam Deck once it was announced. But now there's no more smoke and mirrors. You can actually buy one of these. It won't take a year to arrive. And they happen to have moved a million units off the shelves. So my first impressions of the Steam Deck were like, okay, how good is this really gonna be? And I tell you one thing, apparently pretty damn good. And I wanna tell you how I got there. From the moment the box arrived, it felt like there was care behind this product. From the little portal references, to the places you can use the deck scattered throughout the packaging. And the thing is, not only do they keep the packaging pretty waste-free, but everything Valve includes makes a ton of sense. Where you don't often see a lot of companies going the extra mile anymore to include things like this. Trust me, I've opened and reviewed a ton of different things, and I've looked at a lot of different boxes. And when you see something like this, it's something that you can appreciate. In a world where it feels like companies are constantly squeezing every ounce of profit they can make from a product, throwing in a carrying case feels like it adds even more value to the whole package. And they could easily offer this as an add-on or keep it reserved for the more expensive models, but they don't, which is awesome. It makes sense too. They make sure that these decks stay in good working shape. And even if you shave off a tiny percentage of damage units sent in, you're gonna make the person feel better about their purchase and you're gonna save yourself a possible warranty headache down the road. 
So you get the deck, a case, and a charger. It would have been cool to have seen a female type C jack for replaceable or longer options, because if you're at a distance, it can be a little awkward. But yeah, the entire unit has a pretty decent port selection. There's a headphone jack, a USB-C port, and an expandable SD card slot. It almost feels like we just went back to smartphones of the past. The volume buttons are a set of good tactile buttons, and they also recess the power button, which at first I didn't think about it too much, but it's actually awesome at getting rid of accidental button presses. Because the last thing you wanna do is turn off your Steam Deck mid-game, or accidentally turn it on when you throw it in a backpack. Because the worst thing you can do is, you know, have that iPhone where your flashlight is on. If you've ever seen this, you ever seen people walking around like this? Yeah, accidental button presses suck. All right, so having the port on the top is a good idea, especially if you wanna charge while playing propped up on a table. There's pros and cons with having it on the bottom, but personally, I like the decision to have it up here. It would be nice to have a matching port next to it in a future iteration, because once you're charging, you're basically done unless you throw on an expansion. Okay, so the entire frame of the Steam Deck is made from this matte black plastic that happens to feel really good in the hand. Even before we talk about the ergonomics, the texture is really smooth, but not slick, so it doesn't feel like this is gonna fly out of your hands. It's also not the type to pick up fingerprints like an evidence team, but it's gonna stay pretty classy and it turns into these little glossy accents. It's a nice look. It looks clean, it looks smooth, and it's not completely minimal where it's not functional. The whole look is not drenched in RGB or Asus gamer drip, and I love that. It's a very symmetrical design. The thumbsticks, the track pads, speakers, buttons, all happen to match each other on both sides. And what that equals is a very balanced and comforting machine to use. Which believe it or not, the way the balance of a device is handled can make it feel lighter than devices it's actually heavier than. I mean, it's still almost a pound and a half of a device, so it's almost twice as heavy as a Switch. The ergonomics really help you manage the weight surprisingly well. Like right when you pick this thing up, the layout they chose makes you feel at home. And they chose the Xbox layout, you know, the, the right button layout, but they kept the joysticks at an equal height like a PlayStation controller. And man, I love these. Having full size analog sticks that have full range of travel is amazing when you're used to having these tiny little sticks on all these handhelds. They're actually also capacitive, so if you happen to use gyroscopics for aiming, the system will only engage when it detects your thumbs on the stick, which is really cool. It shares this with the Valve Index controllers. All the main buttons have a glossy finish, which happens to let you get a good grip on them without slipping off. The triggers have good travel distance, and the shoulder buttons are all right, even though they're a little squishy. But here's where things get really interesting, where Valve really beefs up the ergonomics and functionality and where they take from the previous Steam controller. You see, many other companies make handhelds, but this is the way you handle mouse inputs without a mouse. And they can accomplish this by using these little haptic trackpads. The engineering behind tuning the haptics to feel this way is a challenge because you have to remember, all the haptics in this unit need to be tamed down to keep the battery life as high as possible. And these pads manage to give you the feeling of control over a mouse. It feels like you're fighting a little gear inside the controller that has momentum to it. And it really works well. You feel like you know exactly how far the mouse is going. The whole flexibility of customizable controls you get with the Steam Deck is great. It's interesting to note that there's also four more paddles on the back that honestly sit perfectly in the hand when you're holding it. Okay, so I tried to give you a little overview over the design and the ergonomics and how it feels in my hands. I have pretty large hands, so I love having a large game pad that feels like a normal Xbox controller or a PlayStation controller. So now I wanna talk about real world performance and that's where things get really interesting. So when Valve first showed this thing off, one of the games they used to market the deck was Control, which was a pretty huge statement to make regarding its hardware capabilities. Because that's not an easy game to drive. The Steam Deck is powered by an AMD chip based on their Zen 2 and RDNA 2 architectures. They've also packed in 16 gigs of LPDDR5 memory. And performance is great. Obviously they're using a seven inch 16 by 10 IPS display that's 1280 by 800, which at this size keeps this thing manageable to drive regarding pixel count. So the GPU can stay on top of it without gasping for air. It's got pretty chunky bezels, but I'm not gonna put that against it. It's actually a fairly sharp display to look at when you're gaming on it at a normal handheld distance. And the performance has been awesome. I started with Rise Son of Rome, one of the most ridiculously underrated games that I was dying to try in this form factor, and I was blown away. 
Same went with a lot of other older AAA titles that cruised at that 40 to 60 FPS mark, but the way this thing managed to eat up even the more demanding titles was really impressive. Valve's audio team focused on tuning the sound stage of these speakers, and they're actually quite good. Like you can pinpoint things in game with the positional audio. So if you're listening to birds chirping for the 800th time in Skyrim, they get pretty loud. They're not breathtaking, but they do a solid job. Okay, now the cooling approach is another place that keeps the user experience positive because nobody wants hot, sweaty hands when they're gaming. They're using two vents to exhaust all the heat on the unit. And the way they place the vents also keeps them directing heat away from the user. So I never felt like I'm holding a hot brick or that the fans were too loud. Now battery life is another place where number one, yes, if you plan on traveling anywhere with this, bringing the charger is a must. Now the duration of juice you can actually get out of the battery is heavily dependent on the type of game you're playing and the settings that you're running it at. Number two, some AAA games are gonna eat that battery up and then other calmer games are gonna extend that battery life multiple hours. So you have the option to tweak it and gauge how much battery life you want based on how much you're willing to sacrifice on the visual side. And this all ties into SteamOS because this software meshes everything together for a very customizable experience. It's like Valve took this device and handed it to you and said, all right, dude, do whatever you want with it. You can tweak fan curves, TDP, GPU clock speeds. There's FSR support if you wanna render the game at a lower resolution and then upscale it. You can do it. There's a system overlay that gives you live performance metrics for the game you're playing. You can set FPS limits, frame rate locks. You can smooth out any FPS variations. Valve keeps all the key tools accessible to you so you can really dial in and optimize this for the exact experience that you want. Now the price of the Steam Deck starts at $399 or $400 bucks for the base model, which comes with 64 gigs of EMC storage and a glossy screen, which was the one I went with because I wasn't really sure if I was gonna like this that much. So I wanted to get that entry level option. And I think it's probably one of the best choices for most people. I've got a pretty powerful gaming PC that I do all my work and gaming on, so I haven't really been into handhelds for a long time. So now that I've got the experience behind my belt, I can honestly say, this is an incredible value. Sometimes you just wanna get up from your desk, especially if you work from home and play your game somewhere else. This thing has disrupted a gaming market that has felt so stale with overpriced hardware for so long that for once, someone other than Nintendo is making a handheld at a great price point. And you don't have to pay any of those ridiculous Nintendo game prices, support some pretty anti-consumer stuff that's going on over there. All your save data is in the cloud. There's no monthly fees. I feel like we've been so accustomed to being locked down by companies recently that the Steam Deck is a breath of fresh air. Having access to your entire Steam library of games, it's like this basically took a bunch of games I hadn't touched in a long time that had digital dust on them and just ate them up. It's a device that I've had a ton of fun using. And while sure, I'll be back to my gaming PC for the more competitive game options, this has pushed me to game more. Whereas I feel like sometimes you take on a fresh new PC build and you don't even end up gaming on it that much. And I haven't even mentioned the freedom you can get with basically creating the best emulation machine you can get. There's a super active tinkering community and everyone's super helpful with helping you out. Do pretty much whatever you want. And that's where things really shine for the Steam Deck, way further than anything I've ever seen, because I can go into hardware testing and show you graphs, FPS charts, but you already might know about the big numbers, specs, everything on paper for performance, but it's what it can do off the spec sheet, serving as this basically untamable blank slate that really makes it special. I thought the colors were a bit dull, so I booted into desktop mode, which is basically a portable Linux system, downloaded a plugin, and there you go. The screen basically came to life. Valve put the focus on making this a blank slate that is basically asking for the challenge of a game it can't run for you. And here's another thing. The entire unit is basically self-repairable. They're using Phillips screws. Valve literally uploaded a guide on how to take this thing apart. So even if you're not the type of person that will enjoy a device like this, it's pretty easy to root for a company that's using open source software, providing user repairable hardware and offering it all at an attractive price. It's a great direction to push gaming towards. And at this price point right now, it's not for everybody, but if you think you'd be into it, it's probably worth taking a look at. They've really invested into making Linux gaming a reality and having another platform for gaming that's supported other than Windows is always a good thing. It's like Valve took everything they've learned from their past products and experiences, put them together and created this ultimate portable device that really hits home runs beyond its goals. This thing rocks, I'm happy it exists, and that's the Steam Deck. Thank you so much for watching. Catch you guys in the next one.